God bless you. If you'd like to open your Bibles to First Chronicles, and we're going to go to chapter 29. Now, you're probably wondering what's in Chronicles. Well, we're going to find out. We're going to look first at David's praise to God. Now, in context, what this praise is for, although we're not studying on this specific subject, this is when he's giving Solomon the task for he is to be the next king. And he is going to be the one that will build the temple for God. But I want to specifically look within the praise. And I'm going to cross-reference it afterwards with the model prayer that Jesus showed us in Matthew chapter 6. So, we're going to start at verse 10 of First Chronicles 29. So, therefore, David blessed the Lord before all the assembly and David said blessed are you Lord God of Israel our father forever and ever yours O Lord is the greatness the power and the glory the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours yours is the kingdom O Lord and you are exalted as head over all both riches and honour come from you and you reign over all in your hand is power and might in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all now therefore our God we thank you and praise your glorious name but who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this for all things come from you, and of your own we have given you. For we are aliens and pilgrims before you, as were all our fathers. Our days on earth are as a shadow and without hope. O Lord our God, all this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is from your hand and is all your own i know also my god that you test the heart and have pleasure in uprightness as for me in the uprightness of my heart i have willingly offered all these things and now with joy i have seen your people who are present here to offer willingly to you o lord god of abraham isaac and israel our fathers Keep this forever in the intent of the thoughts of the heart of your people and fix their heart toward you and give my son Solomon a loyal heart to keep your commandments and your testimonies and your statutes to do all these things and to build the temple for which I have made provision. Then David said to all the assembly, now bless the Lord your God. So all the assembly blessed the Lord God of their fathers and bowed their heads and prostrated themselves before the Lord and the King. Now, you've just heard this. Let's quickly read from Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 and then we're going to work through them together. Now, in this manner therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Did you notice a few things that were said there, that were also said back here in Chronicles? I know I did. And do you remember, who is David? A man after God's own heart. He was a man that loved God, revered God, trusted in God, believed in God, had faith in God. And Jesus who came from the line of David. 
He knows the scriptures better than any of us. For do you remember when he said to the Pharisees, you do not know the scriptures. And let's go back into Chronicles. Keep a finger here in Matthew 6 while we go back to the Chronicles and see what we've learnt. David blessed God before everyone. Blessed be the Lord, praised be his holy name. He's acknowledging God's greatness in this praise. And he's blessing the Lord. The importance of blessing, as you see in Numbers, with chapter 6, verses 24 to 7. Sorry, 24 to 27, apologies. Where, may the Lord bless you, shine upon you. And then again, when, which other book was it? Was it Ruth? I believe it was in Ruth. Where the men are out working the field. And he comes out from land and he eventually notices Ruth and the Lord bless you. God bless every one of you. It is important that we bless. God's will be done. Now, blessed are you Lord God of Israel, our father. David saying he is our father. And you see this here, our father in heaven. David had a personal relationship with God. His love for God is evident throughout the books of his life, as you'll see in Psalms as well, with all the things he wrote, like Psalm 23, the Good Shepherd. And who was David but a shepherd himself? And he took care of the flock, and who were the flock? God's very own people. Now look, yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory now, where have we heard the power and glory before? Verse 13, Matthew 6. For yours is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. David can see the greatness of God. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. He knows the greatness of God. And for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Humble. Praising God, rejoicing in God, blessed by God. He knows that the kingdom is the Lord's. And you are exalted as head over all. God before all. Putting God first. And you remember, seek God's kingdom first. And then as we continue on, both riches and honour come from you and you reign over all. Those that put their life behind at the foot of the cross and stand up in the new self and follow God. Both riches and honour come from you for God will take care of you when you seek his kingdom and his righteousness and all things will be done for you. Trusting in him to guide you and lead you every step of the way. Sometimes it may be small things, other times it may be big things, but you all know from our own personal journeys learning to know God. As we build and grow what God has done for us and helped us through with times and struggles and strifes. And other times, just to give us that little bit of peace when we have. So as we continue on. In your hand is power and might. In your hand is to make great and to give strength to all. So those that feel weak call on God to give you strength. Call on his power and his greatness to work in your life. To crush and destroy the bondage of sin. To free you from it. To guide you in his ways. And here we go. Now therefore our God we thank you. Giving thanks. Just taking time to say thank you. Sometimes we take life for granted. And we're always asking God for things and, oh, help me, I'm struggling, oh, it's difficult. Don't let me do that, that's bad, keep me on the straight and narrow. But sometimes we just need to stop and be still and know that he is God. He knows what we need before we ask. Sometimes just stop and just thank you. Thank you for everything. You have done so much for me and I can never repay it. But my gratitude in my heart, may you read it. 
and see all that is within it and may there be no falsehood within it thank you for all you do so just thanks and praise your glorious name now look hallowed be your name holy name blessed name and now look humbleness and humility but who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this for all things come from you and of your own we have given you and who is this that is saying this this is the king this isn't anyone think of today's people in power do you think they'd be so humble never think exactly David is humble and he is recognizing the greatness of God. He is giving thanks to God. He is praising God, rejoicing in God, believing and trusting in him. As you see from these verses, he's like, oh, the power and the riches are from you. He's not like, well, I did all this, so I so I worked really hard and, and now I'm rich. It's, no, all my riches and honor come from you. Anything I have is because of you not because of myself trusting completely that humility that devotion that trust exalting god before all respecting his majesty and his goodness for all victory is through god praising his glorious name recognizing for all things of the earth are god's first they're his and it's in his generosity that we have anything. And of your own we have given you. For we are aliens and pilgrims before you. As were all our fathers. Our days on earth are as a shadow and without hope. Pilgrims, aliens. Even though he set up his land. We're pilgrims here. They're waiting for the next. As we all are the new Jerusalem to come. As you learn in Revelations 20 and 21. So, he's recognizing that this is just the temporary. You see how he says, our days on earth are as a shadow. And in a wretched world we currently live. As we carry on, for all abundance is because of God. And then as we carry on through here, that you test our hearts, for you have pleasure in uprightness. So God, test our hearts, and may we live in uprightness to bring you pleasure, to bring you joy, to bring you peace. For we know that the angels rejoice when a sinner comes to repentance. May we all be truly repentant. Seek your righteous ways always. See, calling on these things, that there be uprightness in our hearts. That we willingly, with joy and love, do the good of the Lord. Helping one another in love. For as you see here, that they joyously are giving, all in unison and agreement, for God's temple. Now if you look at the, the early church in Acts 2, when they all gladly get baptized and they all gladly are following steadfastly in the doctrine. And they all together of one mind sell possessions and to give to anyone that has need. They're gladly helping. It's not, oh, well, I better do do some help for someone this day. I, I better make sure I'm doing some good stuff. You know, i got to look good in front of God. Mm -mm -mm. Wrong mindset. Arms giving isn't because you have to. Because as the spirit works in you, your heart changes. And you know what happens? When you wake up the next day, it's, Hmm, I wonder who I can help for the glory of God. Who can I help for God in this, for his kingdom, for his name? Praise be God. How can I praise him this day? How can I live in the spirit this day? Always looking to live for the joy of God. So willingly living in his ways, that he directs our paths. And then look, as we continue on, for our fathers keep this forever in the intent of the thoughts of our heart, of your people, and fix their hearts towards you. 
keep our hearts focused on you our hearts focused on god first and foremost humility putting god first seeking god and his kingdom and his righteousness first and foremost love god with all your heart all your body and all your mind the first and greatest commandment the second like it to love your neighbor as yourself so we're seeing these characteristics in his praising and rejoicing and calling on god and here where we see where he says and give my son solomon a loyal heart to keep your commandments your testimonies and your statutes to do all these things and to build the temple for which i've made provision so he's not saying make my son great make him powerful give him all his enemies give him an easy life or anything like that give my son a loyal heart let his heart be loyal to you to keep your commandments to keep your testimonies and your statutes to do your will you see that we can pray and ask god this in our hearts oh lord help me to have a loyal heart to keep your commandments to keep your testimonies and your statutes and to do all these things gloriously loving you every day of our lives calling this upon our children and our loved ones ourselves and everyone that we work together in the glory of god in the body of christ and then david gets the assembly now bless the lord your god so all the assembly bless the lord god of their fathers they bowed their heads and prostrated themselves before the lord and the king everyone blessed god and jesus in his sermon when he taught the model prayer our father in heaven hallowed be your name the blessing of the holy name of god your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen and amen a heart completely focused on god first and foremost strengthened by god daily diligently so that we are not led to temptation that we will be delivered from the evil one for we will always put god first seeking him and his righteousness now as you see in chronicles this was from david and we see parts of this within the model prayer david loved god and it shows so easily just reading his words you'd have to be blind not to see it and he is humble and he recognizes the majesty of god and he puts god first he rejoices in the kingdom he bless blesses the name of god there is love here there is joy and there is peace of heart there is trust and there is faith and there's long suffering and there's humbleness who am i and these people for we are but pilgrims seeking god first and foremost always putting god first that's self control right there and the lord lead now this was a reading in chronicles chapter 1 Sorry, this was a reading in 1 Chronicles chapter 29. And this was from verses 10 to 20. And then we looked at Matthew chapter 6, and in chapter 6 we went through verses 9 to 13. You can use this in your day-to-day -day prayer as you build your journey with God, getting to know God. building your faith and your trust in God learning what it is to just praise God and give thanks recognizing the greatness of God and all that he does for you our father in heaven is always there we need but call on him and ask for knock the door be answered 
ask and you shall receive. Trust and believe in the Lord and all he does for us. God bless you all.